further in with your your study, um, along with this line drawing that I did of a subject. I'm hoping this is showing up right, but it, it's part of your packet when the attachment of the study and uh, <clears throat> It shows the shading and shadows as well. And I'm going to say, when you go to put this on your piece, just do the basic lines, whether you're drawing freehand or whether you're tracing. Don't worry about doing all the shading and shadows. Use this as a reference. You will come back and look at this once you start painting. So once you've gotten your drawing onto your piece, Take some saran wrap and put it over your drawing, except for the chickadees. Uh, that way you won't smear what you've just put on and just concentrate on the birds for right now. So I always start with birds uh, on their heads, uh, namely their eyes and beaks, because that brings them alive to me anyhow. And uh, know that with birds, their eyes line up with the beak. And when you start to do this, I've started doing a little bit of it. Paint using your black, paint only the iris. And then it can be a little bit larger than usual if you want. And then cut out a little wedge or a little dot. This will give a sparkle to that little chap. So once you've done that, come back around the eye and to a little patch down at the throat. Continue to the head, brush in the beak. Know that the upper portion of the beak fits right into the head. See that right into the head. The lower, the underside curves upward. Now, when I put that in, I often just take my wipe out tool and curve it a little bit. That really helps. At the same time, put a little highlight in it. While you still have a little bit of black on the brush, go into uh, <clears throat> the bird's cheeks. So between the, the black and then go into, I'm sorry, go into the white. You still have a little bit of black on your brush and come in. See how I, I don't, I'm hoping you can see that I'm rounding these off. They have plump little cheeks. If you don't have enough black, go back in. Get a little bit more. If you have tiny fingers, you can pounce it with your finger or you could take uh, a little sipper to uh, make it feel a little bit more round. I'm taking just a tiny little sumi brush, but I could have used a sipper if I was doing the birds bigger. I would push up on the pad of my finger and just give it a tap. That often gives such a nice round feeling. Now, with cream and a tiny bit of yellow red and a little bit of white, we're going to go down the breast towards the flank. Always, I, I hope you can see this. I can't completely paint towards me, but as a rule of thumb, when you're painting, at least I, when I was beginning China painting, I was always told to paint with the brush coming towards me. You have better control doing that. Now I'm just going to take the edge of my 
little bit of my finger and soften that up. It has a little bit more yellow red in it than I want, but the truth be told, when you go to fire this, the yellow red will fade some. It doesn't stay real true all the time. Okay, now we want to start on the rest of the bird, starting with the tails and coming up its back and towards the nape. I'm going to start with the tail. And I'm pretty much using a dry brush. I'm trying to get as much paint on it as possible because I don't want to overwork this. And I also don't want it too oily. I'm actually going to take another dry brush <clears throat> and give it a little bit more contour. I have no paint on this brush. I'm just, I blocked in the color and now I'm refining it. Notice how on his little shoulder, I'm just rounding it off. Same on this guy up here. Maybe bringing a little bit more dark down here. I'll come in with a little bit of dark shadow underneath the breast. Then with a very skinny brush or an edge of a brush, come in and put their little feet. That's it for the birds for this first file. Now what we're going to do is to now look at the cauliflower. Well, before we go on to the cauliflower, look at your birds if you're painting or when you go to do it to assess them. Go through like a little mental checklist. Have you put the highlight in the eyes and the beaks? Have you plumped up the cheeks? Does the shading from the breast to the flank show contours. It's always good to go back and assess this before you go in and fire. And if you do element by element, it makes it better, at least for me, it makes it better. Well, I'm going to remove the saran wrap now so I didn't mess up my drawing. And now uh, for the cauliflower, we want to have a uh, a light coat of gentle green to make the little buds in the cauliflower. Think of chunks or bubbles. And I'm just blocking in color as I do this. Now I know if you look at this, I know that I have these leaves and carrots coming around it. So that's going to help act as a contrast between the darkness of the leaves and the whiteness of the cauliflower. So when I'm painting in the buds of the cauliflower, I'm going to make sure that the areas closest to the leaves are the lightest. That will help make them more pronounced and uh, give better definition. Right now, I'm not really defining 
I'm just dabbing in. I'm hoping, I'm hoping you all are the same as right. I have my phone on a stand. Therefore, I can't see what I'm doing. Like, I can't see on my phone what I'm doing. I can see what I'm doing while I'm doing it down here, but not up there. All right, now that's way too much green on the cauliflower. And I'm not worried about that because I'm going to come in with a Q-tip and just create some spaces, some little openings, having different areas. We just had cauliflower the other night. One of my students bought some purple cauliflower that she grew in her garden and we roasted it in the oven. It was really good. So there you go with the cauliflower. Now, one to the leaves. Again, I'm gonna block in the color. If you look at the color photograph again, you will see where I have the shading. I have the darkest part of the leaf next to the cauliflower. There's the cast shadow on the leaf down here. There's a fold over leaf that's darker, a little bit more cast shadow down here on the leaf there. This is all middle tones right here with a little bit of shading, not much, but just enough to give some variation in it because rarely is something all the same color or depth of color. And this turned leaf, the upper part is lighter than we have it in shadow right next to the cauliflower. Then we have this little leaf down here. So considering all of that, were you all able to see that? I hope so. Um, so considering that, I'm going to come in with a light coat of green and just block in I'm just getting the color on, sort of willy-nilly. Then I'm going to come back in and start refining. Now I'm going to get some darker green and maybe add a little bit of black to it to intensify some of the color. And again, I'm trying not to use a very wet brush. I'm coming in a little bit drier than normal. Here's the cast shadow from that stand-up leaf onto the leaf that's down low. Here's the turnover on it.
Now, that doesn't look like much at this point. The leaves around the cauliflower are just like some other leaves, like on broccoli and uh, trying to think what else. A very crinkly lettuce, cabbage, uh, are very crinkly. So I just take some bubble wrap after I put the paint on. By the way, I'm using an open medium uh, and I'm just going to pounce it with the bubble wrap. Look at that. See the texture that's giving that? Now it's still not well enough defined. So I'm gonna come in with the wipeout tool and get in the veins. I'm also going to take the wipeout tool and wipe out some of the cauliflower where it comes right into the leaves. Wiping out where it's, I've gone outside of where I want to be. Cleaning it up is what I'm doing. Just cleaning it up. So that pretty much does it for the cauliflower and leaves. I'm just looking through, making a few more light areas. Just as you did with the bird, you want to do a checklist on what you've just done. Do you have the darkest shading against the lightest area of the cauliflower buds? Are the veins clearly or sharply defined? Have you cleaned up any edges? Have you created like the outside edges, making them more curvy and crinkly? Could you remind us what um, painting medium you're using? I'm using an open medium. Um, most of the time I use RA. Sometimes it's just whatever I happen to have handy at the moment. I have a lot of different things, but that's what I use most of the time. Okay, now on to the carrots. The carrots, uh, have these wonderful stems at the end, of which we only have a little bit. We can only see a little bit of those, but they have a, a recess in them. So we have to contour our colors in such a way that we feel that the recess is going on in the carrots and that it also helps to find the shape and the roundness and the knobbiness of the carrots. So begin with the stems, take a little bit of brown and come in. Voila, that's about all you need, just a little, little touch. And I'm, I'm doing almost like a backwards L shape coming out of it. You could also put a tiny bit of green at the end, if you'd like. Then I'm gonna come in with my wipeout tool and give a little bit of highlight to that. Now for the background carrot, 
I'm going to use mostly uh, the yellow red or south brown, if you have that, um, or even orange with a bit of brown on it. So um, I'm going to use the south brown with a little bit of brown on it. And I'm just coming in around the recesses. As with a lot of things that I do, I often just block in the color first and then come back and refine. So though I'm blocking, I'm also being aware of where I have darker areas and where I have lighter areas. So I, I'm not covering completely. So I'm coming in with a little bit of brown on the soft brown. I am going to come back and refine that, but for the time being, I'm going to go back in this time with yellow brown and maybe a little bit of yellow red. I'm not getting much brown on the foreground carrot. That's a little bit lighter in color. And if you know, if you look at your color drawing, you'll see that it's very light where it comes against the back, the back carrot. I'm leaving some areas of white again, because I know that I'm going to come in and redefine things, but I, I want to leave as much light as possible. To help with the shading of the carrots and its contours. I think I may have lost my brown. So I'll put that back in. I'm not painting smoothly on purpose on these carrots because they're not real smooth, but I, I am going to come in and refine now. I'm using a dry brush. Need to get a little bit more color on that. So I'm just patting, slightly patting. And doing the same for the one in the back. Now this in particular and the leaves as well will be further defined on your next fire. This is only a two fire piece and you won't have much to do on this the next time around, it's mainly just intensifying the shadings and the shadows.
We have a farmer's market close to here, a huge one, and it's open every day. And I love to go there. We're big vegetable eaters, not vegetarians, but we do eat a lot of vegetables. <clears throat> There you are for the first fire. Um, after you have <clears throat> defined everything with your wipeout tool and you're satisfied with it, then uh, fire it to 016 to 018, whatever. Uh, if your reds or oranges can take a hotter fire, go as hot as you as you can. And that that is it for, for this little chickadees, carrots, and cauliflower. Does anybody have any questions? You can unmute, Hello? You can mute your, unmute yourself if you would like to ask her questions. I have a question. Yeah. This is Linda Walters, and this is my first video online um, for iPad. Okay. And, and I thank you for all you've done, but I've not made it to any others. But um, this is recorded, correct? Correct. It will be recorded and it will be uploaded to the IPAT Museum YouTube channel. And okay. I will do that myself as soon as this is over. And then okay. this evening, when I have the technical support for the website, it will be uploaded to the IPAT website. Plus, it will also have the study sheets that she sent out. When you, okay. When you received your invitation, um, you get uh, some PDF study sheets that you can download and follow when the teacher is at doing the online presentation. So those same study sheets will also be uploaded to the ipatinc.org. It's ipat and then inc.org, ipatinc.org. Um, it will be available on that as well as all the others that have been recorded with the study sheets tomorrow. This afternoon, as soon as I'm finished, I will uh, upload this to the iPad YouTube, the iPad Museum YouTube channel. And okay. then, so you can see that, but um, uh, there's no way to upload study sheets to the YouTube. So that- might Okay, be, well, um, and I, yeah. And I appreciate that because I did- uh, Okay. Or well, here again, for those that may not have seen it again, is the companion piece to this. And um, if you email me, uh, I, I can send you the line drawing of it. I haven't done a study of it, but uh, I do have my drawing. Um, and let's see, I just did another uh, still life quite different. Can you all see that? Uh, bring it, bring it down a little. It's too much. It's too close to the camera. So if you can bring it back toward your body a little bit and turn it, okay, and turn it ninety degrees. The other way, the other way. There you go. Okay. Okay. So this was a, a real challenge <laughs> uh, in doing a still life. Uh, I, I had to do quite a few still lives in art school, and I just sort of went back to that uh, time in my life uh, a couple months ago and did this apple with the, with the wooden utensils and the wooden basket. But I, I thought it was a good study in shades and shadows. Wow. And, um, On my more whimsical side, uh, here's my architecture background doing uh, silly things. Uh, I've done several similar pieces to this, but each one different in images, but all very colorful and a lot of pen work. But it's, it's fun to do. And I uh, have worked with students to help them design some of their own favorite buildings or places in a more whimsical way, and then pull it all together with the use of patterns and colors. Uh, let's see. 
less than the regional goal. Why not? This makes no sense. So you want to explain to me? And here's here's another piece that I've done. Uh, I call this legacy after the longhorn steer, the mom and her calf. And that's pretty much it. I, I have dozens of pieces, but <laughs> I think this is enough. Um, but thank Beautiful. you all. Thank you. What? Beautiful, I, thank you. Beautiful yeah. artwork. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining in. I would we love to meet all of you in person.